Well, behind me here, we've got Portsmouth Harbour. And we can see just below me the Vosper shipyard in Porchester. But we can also see Portsmouth and the Solent. And it was here where our story begins. In 1897, Turbinia, designed and built by Charles Parsons, was shown to the world. That was built in Newcastle, but the world saw it here, where it drove at 34 and a half knots through the middle of the 1897 Spithead Fleet Review. That's over 39 miles an hour, by far the fastest boat in the world at the time, and a more futuristic object than anyone had ever seen, an entirely different kind of thing. It was like Jules Verne's fantasy of the future made real, and so fast that the gunboats protecting the fleet review could not catch it. And while that was, in a sense, the beginning of the modern age, this place would then be the centre of high-speed development for the next 50 or 60 years. Yeah, between Portsmouth and Southampton and in the Solent, we've got a number of companies. We've got Hubert Scott Payne down at Southampton, really one of the prime developers of high-speed marine craft, builder of Miss Britain and Miss England, um, who worked with T. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, to develop the high-speed rescue launches, and Vosper in Portsmouth and in Porchester below us here. But we've also got the story moving on from Tabinia. Over on the Isle of Wight, we've got Samuel White at Cowes, who built the Navy picket boats and developed the double diagonal technology for building small, lightweight craft. And that technique would be instrumental in the development over the following 50 years of some of the record-breaking machines that would be built here, just below me in the yard in Porchester. Now, Samuel White, as well as building small, lightweight and relatively high-speed craft, also built aircraft. He was one of the pioneering early aircraft builders. And um, Percy M.C. of Fairham, who built Mrs. Victor Bruce's Mosquito powerboat, was actually apprenticed with um, White's over at Cowes, and he would have picked up lots of the techniques of using materials in the new aviation technology. Now, the link between aviation and marine is key. Many of the companies actually built both planes and boats. We have ferries down on the Hamble who were building high-speed power boats that would even end up being used in James Bond films. Also, who built uh, Peter Twiss's Fairy Delta aircraft, which flew in the very sky above where we are when he became the first man ever to exceed a thousand miles an hour and travel faster than the earth itself spins. And Peter Twiss lived in Titchfield. But the link with aircraft runs deeper. Many of the craft built here at Vospers actually used aircraft engines. And the technology to build the fuselages was maybe closer to aircraft than traditional ship technology. The latest challenger to the world's water speed record held at the moment by America is the new British jet engine ski boat Crusader with John Cobb at the controls. The Crusader's got an engine similar to the Comet airliners which will lift it onto its skis at high speed. Britain's latest jet boat will be getting its first try out at Loch Ness. Britain's new jet boat Crusader takes the water at Loch Ness, watched by her driver John Cobb and his wife. The weather's not too bad today, so Cobb gets ready for a trial run. Already holder of the world's land speed record, he hopes to become the fastest man on water and bring the title back to Britain from America. A speed of 200 miles an hour is forecast for the Crusader, but we'll soon see what she can do. Batteries start up her jet engine. is a bit choppy, but the Crusader's already touching the 140 mile an hour mark. Just as soon as a few minor adjustments... So this, behind me, 
is the Vosper shipyard in Porchester, which really was one of the most pioneering companies of developing high-speed vessels, from the famous motor torpedo boats and motor gunboats of the Second World War, uh, and also record-breaking boats built for people like Sir Malcolm Campbell, Donald Campbell, John Cobb, and right up to Richard Branson with his Virgin Atlantic Challenger. This is the slipway where Malcolm Campbell had one of the Bluebird boats built and Donald Campbell would work on Bluebirds at the same yard. Sadly, just a few years later, Donald Campbell would be killed in a different Bluebird. Knowing the risks, these people are driven to go forward, to go faster. And John Cobb was also sadly to lose his life in Crusader. John Cobb died on the waters of Loch Ness, fighting as always to win new glories for Britain. For six weeks, the Crusader had been at Loch Ness. At dawn each day, John Cobb waited for the weather to clear, and always his wife waited with him. Then, when the loch was calm and the wind slight, the Cobb would climb aboard the Crusader, and a few minutes later, the shrill whine of his jet engines told that another attempt would be made on the world's water speed record. Out into the dark center of the loch, Cobb took the Crusader on those cold mornings. The official timekeepers took their places as the silver boat made its way to the start of the measured mile, and those on the banks held their breath and echoed the words of the Queen Mother. Good luck, John Cobb. Afternoon on the day that was to be his last, Cobb took the Crusader along the measured mile again faster and faster until he was traveling at 240 miles an hour and then there on the waters of Loch Ness John Cobb was found the glories that he had won during his lifetime were not for himself but for his country for John Cobb was above all a great Englishman.